Well, hello everyone. Um, my name's Chris Love. I'm a Tableau Zen Master with the Information Lab. My role at the Information Lab is to help customers get started with their Tableau experience. We um, we help them grow, and I look after about 30 accounts for our UK team. So that's really kind of what I do. But what the Information Lab does generally, we're a Tableau and UltraX reseller. We work with our customers to help them work with Tableau and UltraX and get the most out of that solution. So we offer consulting services. We also offer um, the, the ability to buy Tableau and UltraX through us, and, and we act as resellers. So we're going to get started. What I want to talk to today is how to create advanced chart types in Tableau. Now we get, we're going to work through this right from scratch. We're going to work through it from very first principles in terms of lines, bar charts, what Tableau is doing underneath the covers so that you can really understand how I as a Tableau Zen master as an expert user start to build out some some chart types that aren't available directly through the normal interface how I learn to work with and get the most out of Tableau as an expert user I'm going to just be working through this Tableau workbook everything I do is going to be in Tableau today as I work through it's probably likely I'll make some mistakes, so bear with me. Um, this is all going to be live. I'm spending an hour working in Tableau, going from right from scratch all the way through to advanced chart types. So as you can see, I've, I've got my data over here. So I've got a, a whole bunch of data sets for us to work with today. And I've, I, each data set has got its dimensions and measures over here. And then I'm going to be building out different chart types on the right too. As I do that, I'm also going to be showing you uh, some Tableau public visas. So visualizations that I've worked on and completed uh, that I display on my Tableau public page, just to give you an idea of the chart types I'm building, how you can use them and, and where they might go. A lot of those are going to be public data. It's very difficult to show um, data from a commercial setting. So apologize, apologies for that. But hopefully you can take what I'm doing today and then apply it back to the things you do. Um, also, I guess just to know before I get started, some of the chart types I'll be building aren't necessarily best practice. So when you're thinking about applying this back to your data sets, think about that play between engagement over here and understanding over here. And the two don't have to be competing poles. What you can do is ha make sure you have really engaging, beautiful charts that your audience still can understand. And we'll, we'll talk more about that as we go through these different chart types and, and some of the uh, advantages and disadvantages. Now, let's start off with a line. Let's explore life expectancy. Um, this was a recent Makeover Monday data set. I think it was just this week. Um, and, and I'm going to just show you how to build a line in Tableau, something that's that's very, very simple. Um, but as we do that, we'll we'll explore what Tableau's doing and the differences between the way Tableau can do things and the way you might want to do that. So let me start by pulling up the year here and dropping it onto columns. And as I pull up my life expectancy from my measures, I'm going to get a bar chart. Now, why, tab, why is Tableau giving me a bar chart in, in this instance? Well, it, it's to do with the two values that I've dropped on here and their, um, and the pills and their color. What you'll notice is that one uh, pill is blue and one pill is green. Now, that's affected the way they display on my worksheet as I build the chart. And Tableau's interpreted that, and using the mark type, it's decided that it's going to build a bar for me. Why has it done that? Well, first of all, the year I've dragged on is a discrete, so a blue uh, value. So it's a blue field, it's a discrete field. And that means down here, I'm getting an individual value for each of those years. Life expectancy 
is a green pill. So that means it's continuous. That means that over here, rather than a label, I've got an axis. Now that axis allows Tableau to then draw its marks and show me the value of the life expectancy for each of these years. Let me just fit this view on here so you can see the, the entire kind of life expectancy across all this data set by year. Now, let me show you what happens if I change this year to a green pill. Tableau is going to work out that I probably want a line chart there. This automatic mark just here has drawn me a line. We can see that by this uh, indicator just here. Also, what's changed is this value just here. So the year, rather than now being labels and breaking up that view into different bars, we've now got a continuous axis. Now, axes are great because what I can do is right click on them and I can edit them and I can add reference lines. So I can add the average life expectancy across this data set as a line. That's not something I can do with a blue pill. So if you're ever not sure whether you've got an axis or a label in Tableau, what you just need to do is right click on it and just see what's, what's happening. Do you get that edit axis bar? Let me just step back, delete that, and change this back. So let me show you the year. We've got a reference line. We can edit this axis. It's a continuous axis showing us the, the depth of the, the measure. It's effectively, think of it like a ruler. Think of it as a, a continuum from right down here from 1960 to 2015. And then we can basically represent any value all along that continuum, all along that ruler. And if I change this to a year, then what you'll see is that as I come down and right click just here, then we've no longer got that axis. We can no longer edit that. So this is the first thing to understand about Tableau, the difference between these blue discrete pills and these green continuous pills. Let me change this back to a continuous measure and then explain more about what's going on with these different mark types. Let me show you how we can break this up by lines. Now, the, those of you who know Tableau, and I know many, many of you do know about Tableau, uh, will know that we can just pick up, say, the region and drop it onto color. And that's going to break up based on the regions I've got in my data. So East Asia, North America, all the different countries I've got in my data group by region. It's going to break that up and show me how the average life expectancy changes over time. And this line has now been broke up by this discrete region pill. It's blue. It's a discrete region pill. Now, Let's put on something like decade. What I've done is created a quick um, column here. So if you ever need to create a decade from a year value, what you very quickly need to do is just divide the year by 10, take the integer of that to round it off, and then multiply it back up by 10, and that will round it down to the nearest 10 years. So what I'm going to do is just pick up that decade value and drop that onto my level of detail. Now I can either drop it here onto my detail pill or drop it down here. These are going to do the same thing. And you'll notice that Tableau's broken up that line. What happens, Tableau is, is drawing that line and it's, it's broken up by that decade. So effectively the discrete pills on the level of detail or on color, anything down here breaks up my view and means that my line is simply drawn across for each region and decade across all the years. So what happens if I drag year on? Year is a blue pill. I'm going to get dots because I can no longer join those lines up by anything. We've got, we do, we're drawing a line per year, region and decade. Something else to understand about the way Tableau works. 
Bear in mind that we can change this mark type, this automatic mark type, the Tableau's chosen a line. If we change this to, to be a line and specify that it's a line, then you'll notice we've got this path mark. And the path mark will tell us how we want to join that line and in what order. So let's tell Tableau that we want to join it by year. And now Tableau is going to start at the first year within each decade region combination and join those elements up across each year. So now we're back to our line. Let's step back and show you what happens if I decide that I want to join the lines, the dots together by region. Then what Tableau is going to do is start off at the first alphabetical region and join that to the next alphabetical, etc. per region and year. So this level of detail is breaking up the view within my chart. It's breaking that up and it's explaining to Tableau how to draw the chart and how we should do it. And then the path is telling it how to draw those lines in between those categories. Now this is really important as we move on when we come to understand how Tableau works. Let's talk about bars a minute. Um, I've got some hurricane data here. So I've, I've just drawn a quick bar. So let's build that out for you. Um, we've got the number of records here. And let's join that by decade. So we can see the number of hurricanes that have hit the US by each decade. And now remember that Tableau's choosing how to show that data. It's choosing this automatic mark type, which is the bar type. And when it does that, then it means that it's drawing this bar up the axis. But it also means that as I drag things on, so for example, the highest uh, category of that hurricane and drop it down here, then we're going to get a new bar per category broken down by each decade. So now we've got one, two, three, four bars separating this bar out, as you can see by the, the marks in between them and by the fact as I move over them, they're highlighted. Now, different mark types have different effects in Tableau, something else that is quite important to learn. The bar type and the area type will both stack on each other. It makes sense that these, these mark types stack because as we, as we use them, we don't want them to cover each other up. These are large areas that we don't want to, to cover each other up. If I show you circles, you'll see that my axis now changes and these are no longer stacked. And this is something we can control through the analysis menu. So you can say it's automatic and currently it's off for circles. If I go back to bars, it's automatic and it's currently on for bars, but I can turn that off. And now all those bar, four bars are overlapping each other and I can't tell what they're doing. Let's step back, use Control Z. And let's move that onto color so we can see the different colors that we've got here. So again, understanding the stacking principles of data and what Tableau's doing is really key. Um, Scatter plots are the next thing I want to move on to in terms of building up our basis of these chart types and explaining exactly what Tableau is doing. Then we can get on to building some much more kind of exciting charts for you guys who've been using Tableau for a while. But I just want to make sure we've got these basics absolutely right. So let's build a scatter plot. I'm going to do that using some world indicator data. Um, I'm going to do it using. Let's do tourism inbound. So that can go across the horizontal axis and tourism outbound. And I'm going to average this so that we get an average measure of the tourism. And you can see what Tableau's done is given us two axes. These are both green pills. So Tableau's worked out that we need two axes and we need to draw a scatter plot. And it's worked out that this automatic type we can see just here is the shape mark. So it's drawing us a little circle up here. 
And we've only got one circle. We've only got one mark. And if you're ever not sure about the m number of marks you've got, then this mark down here will tell you exactly what's going on. So we've got one mark. How do we break that out? How do we break that and break that down by different countries? Well, all we need to do is drag the country onto here, and that's going to break down our view. And because this is a discrete pill, it's broken that down. And now we've got the US up here, lots of people um, going in and out of the country in terms of tourism. Countries like Germany have got a lot of people outbound, so lots of people leaving them, not as many people inbound to visit them. Countries like Spain have got the converse. They've got lots of people coming in, not many people going out. And as you use these pills here, bear in mind that they're always being dropped onto the different pills they're always going on to this detail pane so they're going to break down the view so if i drag this to label we're still breaking down the view and breaking it out into that 186 different countries if i put it onto color the same thing's going to happen let's step back so now let's perhaps uh just look at the, the total population size by that so we can get a feeling of the total number of people in in the country so we can see down here countries like India there's not much tourism in in and out of the country compared to its relative size something like China's got a lot more and United States even though relative to India and China it's got a lot less people we can see that there's lots of people flowing both inbound and outbound in terms of the, the tourism. Now, what's gonna happen when I drag on region? Region is a, another discrete pill. It's another thing that will break down our view, but it's also a function of country. Each country only fits in one region. So when I drag this to color, and color each region, so blue Africa, green Asian, yellow the Americas. It's not broken our view down, we've still got 186 marks. If each country was in more than one region, we'd see those marks be split up into the different regions. As you can see, if I just step back and pick up year and drag that on, then you'll see that now I've got many more marks to thousand and, and plus and I've got lots of the United States down here so understanding how Tableau breaks down data when we're using this detail pane is key to understanding how to build out more advanced smart types one small note on this if you have got used to um, this aggregate measures value just here, this, this option within the analysis menu. What this is telling Tableau to do is to always aggregate those measures. So when we've got nothing on our detail, and let's just get rid of that, then you can see we've only got one mark that's averaging across all our rows of data, the tourism inbound and the tourism outbound. If I turn this off, Tableau is going to stop aggregating those measures and it's going to show us one mark per point of per record in the data set. It's not something I, I typically turn off. I want to control my level of detail by the things I drag and drop down here so that I can see what's happening with my data and I can control what's happening. So let's step back. What you'll notice is, as I had that green pill down here, green pills don't break up that view. Dimension, dimensions break up the level of detail within this view. Green pills don't. So, what can scatter plots show you? This is an example taken from my Tableau public uh, view, just looking at the difference between the one year's 
profit percentile and another year's profit percentile across a whole bunch of different products and countries. So you can see that phones in France had a big number of orders and it was in the high percentile in 2013 and it was also in a relatively high percentile in 2014. So the higher things are up this axis, the better they are. The lower they are on this axis, then the worse they were last year. So these are the guys who are improving. These are the guys who have always been good. These were profitable last year, slightly less profitable, and especially these, so they're declining, and these need some work. And I've added some annotation and words around that to really show off these different quadrants. And, and as you build out scatter plots, they, they can be really useful to, uh, to understand. Right, tree maps. Um, I want to go very quickly through another couple of marks, mark types. Um, let's show you tree maps. So I've got um, 100 songs of all the world's lyrics extracts. And what we can do is just start by dragging, let's, let's start with a song. Which song shall we choose? Um, bridge Over Troubled Waters. So I'm going to filter that data down to the Bridge Over Troubled Waters. And then I'm going to drag out my words down here. Now, you can see that because I've got 77 unique words within my data set, Tableau has just dropped those as squares. The mark type has gone automatic and it's gone to a square. And so when I size by the number of records, it's going to size those squares and understand that I probably want a tree map. And then I can put these words on label. You can see that the most popular word in this song is bridge, followed by troubled, when, etc. And then we can break this out with something like stop words, because remember, if we drag a dimension on, we're going to break our view up. So we're going to now break that down into different types of words. So stop words are the small words like um, I, over, when, your. So these are the kind of the, the more important words. So we're breaking down that view. And again, Tableau's decided to do that automatically and it's built as a tree map. I'm going to show you an alternative view where we need to step away from that automatic. Um, uh, mark type. And when we do that, um, before we do that, sorry, I want to show you kind of what those 100 song lyrics can look like. So this is a visualization I built on Tableau Public, the word, uh, showing words featured in different songs and just breaking those down into one big tree map. This isn't a very analytical viz, but it's certainly a, a very compelling and, and um, it's been one of my, my most popular visualizations on Tableau because it's so engaging, because it's so interesting, because you can find a song like, um, let's say, Stairway to Heaven and find out all the words that were used in that song and how they compare to other songs. So time is of the essence. Let's talk about word clouds. So word clouds we can build out in the same way. Let's, uh, let's clear this and show you how we can build a word cloud in Tableau. Again, trying to build up on these fundamentals of how Tableau works. So again, I'm going to pick a song. Um, let's go Billie Jean. And I'm going to pick out the words again. So I'm going to drop those down here. And then I'm going to size them exactly like I did before to build that tree map. But then we change this mark type and we can choose a couple of things. We could choose the circle and that's going to give me this bubble map. And if I put the word onto label, you'll be able to see the representation in these bubbles. Again, Tableau's understood that we're not breaking down this visualization by anything else. Therefore, we're just showing in these bubbles and the number of words. If I change it to text, we're going to get the, the, the word cloud. We're going to show Tableau how to break this up. And 
we can then break this view out because we we can control the rows and columns. We can put our stop words on rows. So we can see the ones that aren't stop words up here broken out into a different word cloud. So we're breaking down the view, breaking it up. And what that's what's happening with the marks just here, they're being broken up by the dimensions just here and the, the uh, dimensions just here that are breaking up that, that view and telling it what to display. So these are really important concepts for you to understand about Tableau. Right, I want to go back to a, the, the scatter plot and then talk, link that up with the lines. I want to link that up with the lines because this is going to be really important later when we come on to more advanced data types. So let's show you how to build a connected scatter plot. The way to read a connected scatter plot is that it shows, in this case, that tourism inbound and outbound and how that's changed over time. So I've sized it by year. Germany in 2000 had very low inbound and outbound, and over time, it's grown and got bigger up until about 2007, 2008, when it's then crashed before we recovery in about 2010 when the data ends. So really compelling views to be able to see a change between two variables and view them by year as they're joined up. So let's show you how to build those. I mean, the fundamentals are, are very similar to what we had before. We just pick up the tourism inbound and the tourism outbound. We break it up by country. And I think perhaps we'll just filter this by something like Europe. Now we want to do this by year. So let's drag a year on and label those different years. So we're now going to get a view by country by year. So if I highlight the different countries in here, then you can see for Germany, for example, you can see that moving just there and going up, but we need to connect these points. Now we've already talked about the way to do this. We need to change this to a line. And okay, that, that's kind of okay, but Tableau's not joining the points up in the way I'd expect. Tableau was chosen just to start down here with 2001, 2000, 2002, etc. And you can see that for some reason it's joining 2004 and 2012. It's just choosing to do that based on the axis position. Instead, what we need to do is tell Tableau through the path variable how to join up those lines. And so let's pick up this year, drop it onto path, and make sure we've got year in here. There we go. So make sure that we've got that year there. You'll notice that when I had year down here, that was breaking that up and again, causing that line to break up because it's a discrete pill. So we need to make sure we, we remove that year just there and make sure we're joining across those different years. And what I then did was if, if I hold down control just to copy this pill, we can also put it on size so that you can see the growth. And I think compared to this version, if it looks slightly different, is because I've got my axes the other way around. So quick way to fix that is using this swap rows and columns option up here. And there we go. So we've, we've built our connected scatter plots and connected scatter plots are great ways to show the change in two variables over time and see how things move. We can see the effect of the 2007 crash and 2007 tourism, um, uh, sorry, uh, terrorist attacks in the United Kingdom on the London Tube Network really brought down that inbound and then combined with the um, with the economic crisis, um, we, we then see a, a bit of a sustained recovery just here, but not to the levels of something like Germany.
Right, let's get into some more fun charts. So uh, let's show you how to build a slope chart. Again, if you notice the title of this talk, it was talking about using padded data to build out um, visualizations and chart types. We're still not there. I still want to work through the fundamentals so that you can understand then how to get there within the last 20 minutes or so. So let's rattle through this uh, this slope chart. What this is showing is the a ranked view of how the rank of the population of uh, I think it's 65 plus has changed. So we can see that Italy used to have the biggest number of 65 pluses in Europe. It's now second to Germany. Belgium has really suffered compared to everyone else. It's not got the same, in terms of rank, the same number of um, 65 plus. How do we build something like this? Oh, let's have a go. Well, first of all, I need to understand the population of the 65 plus. So let's drag that on. And I need to break that out. Um, and let's break, let's do that um, and make it a discrete pill so we get the region per, sorry, the, the population per country. And I'm going to just filter these by the region to make sure we've just got Europe, just to make it a bit more manageable. Okay, so now we've, we've got a measure of this population. And what we can do then is rank this. So if I double click here and just use my rank calculation, I'm going to use a rank unique. So if there's any draws, there's no problem. And then let's change this back to a discrete pill so we can see those values. So we can see that number one, Italy in terms of the ranked total population. So I'm gonna um, move country back down here and what we'll see is that this breaks, our rank unique breaks because we need to still compute this over that country. And there we go. I'm gonna get rid of the ones without any values. So we've got a rank unique and I'd like to do that by year. So let's drag on this year and let's keep 2000 and 2012. Now I've got blue pills, so I'm getting labels here. I'd like to have a set of continuous axes so we can change these to continuous. And when I do that, we start seeing that slope chart come into effect. So there's a few problems with it. Let me just shrink it up. Well, the first problem is that um, my rank unique is now ordered wrong. So Italy down here is in the wrong order. So I can reverse that by right clicking editing my axis and moving it across. Um, the next thing is I, I, I'd like to add my labels. Um, there's no room on this axis down here for the labels. So let's change this back to a discrete pill and resize this. So now we've got, because we've got a label down here, we're joining in the middle. There's actually some room here, so that makes a lot more sense. And then we can put our country label on here, choose to label the line ends, so we get that nice lined, lined up just here. Let's hide the year, because we know these are years down here. Let's hide this axis, because we don't need to see it's a, a rank now. And then we could change the color, so we can put on that rank unique onto color, edit that color. And I mean, I chose this nice temporal diverging color set and change the, the mark type so that they'd also match that mark color. And then we can change the background. So if I click just here and format, and then just get rid of any grid lines we've got on here. 
And also, if, if you're if you're doing this, you might want to just get rid of the axis labels, and the axis rulers, and the axis ticks down here, and tidy up any fonts and make sure they're a nice white color. So then we've got our nice slope chart doing exactly what we want, and we've built that through. We filtered, we used the rank unique, and we've built that out. Moving on from the slope chart, another really useful chart type is the, the bump chart. This is a bump chart. Um, it's not as pretty as the last one, but it just shows the life expectancy and the, the change over time. But from 1960 to 2015, and again, I've ranked it to stop the life expectancy kind of bunching all up together. So let's build that out. It's going to be a very, very simple, similar process to what we had before. So I'm going to just take the rank unique of my life expectancy. So I can pull that up from here. And I'll take the rank unique of the average life expectancy. And we want to compute that over our country. So I drag country down to my detail and then compute over that. Now you'll notice that this is stacking all those ranks on top of each other. We, do, we don't want that to happen, uh, but we'll deal with that in a second because as soon as we put the year on and change that to continuous, then we start to get something that looks a bit better because Tableau is suddenly worked out that rather than that bar chart, that we needed that we had before and you can see that from that mark remember bars stack so it doesn't make sense when i add the other continuous measure just here tableau is going to work out that i needed a line i'm going to reverse this axis so we get the first ranked item at the top i'm going to filter this back down to europe And there we go, we're starting to get somewhere. Um, when you build bump charts, one thing you need to be aware of is values where countries might not have all the data. There's some nulls in here. Um, to fix that, what I did was very quickly created a new worksheet, looked at the country names, looked at their life expectancy, or let's actually, let's look at the number of records and then filtered the country name. Um, so filtered the life expectancy based on the nulls, that's right. So I took all the values and said, make sure that you just give me the non-null values. So now you can see if I filter this down, that as I scroll to the bottom, we've got a whole bunch of data here that had nulls for that life expectancy. So I captured those. I don't want to show those in the data because there's a lot of movement. They affect those ranks. So I created a set and said, exclude me. So these are my empties with nulls. And then when I come back to my bump chart, I can just pick that up and drag that up here. And it will remove those weird kind of things that jump between years because there's those nil values and fit them up. And we can get really nice bump charts. We can dual axis this with circles uh, to get something perhaps that looks like this. This is my uh, history of the Football League visualization. There's a bit more complexity here because I chose to um, add some curves here just to to get the values between the bumps looking a bit nicer we don't have time to go through how to do that today but you can see how nice that looks and how you can see the rank of these two teams that are selected here just flowing through this visualization right 20 minutes to the top of the hour unit charts um i wanted to cover unit charts because they th they, they help highlight how to use the index function and what the index function is doing. So let's do that quick. We're back to hurricane data. Um, hurricane data by decade. So let's build, drop on the, the decade here and then drop on the 
number of records like we did before to build a bar chart. What a unit chart shows is the individual hurricanes over that time. So what we expect is to get 27 records just here. So when I drag the number down to detail, we do get those. And then when I change these to squares, mm, no, that's not quite enough worked, has it? Because what I want is one square per hurricane that Tableau stack, um, stack them on top of each other. I could turn stacking on, but again, that, that works okay. But I, I don't really want to play with this stacked value. So let's turn that off again and show you an alternative. So rather than using the number of records, what I can do here is use an index function, which will count the numbers in here. So if I now compute that over the number, it's going to say per decade, count across each one and give the first one the value one, the second one the value two, the third one the value three. And then I can look at this um, category and color by that. So you'll see that these null categories, then we've got the ones, then we've got the twos, then we've got the threes, etc. What's going on here now? What's happening is that these values are overlapping. So we need to change something about this index function. So let's edit that. And what Tableau's saying is that per decade and per category, index the number. So give me one, two, three, up to how many values there are, and then start again. We don't want it to start again with the category. We want it to continue. So let's tick that value as well. Super, we're getting somewhere. Now it's counting through the hurricanes and in order showing us their category. And it's doing that based on the order of the top value here, based on the number of the hurricane in the year. But instead, what I perhaps want to do, so the, the number is the ID. What I perhaps want to do is order it by the category and drop that in here so we've got a nice ordered list of categories so that's the unit chart and it introduces us to the index so that we can start moving on right this is an example of something i built um, using a unit chart it shows my local uh, gig venue shows the different number of gigs and who played there so we can see different bands playing at each time so we can see um, the stranglers then we can highlight and see they also played up here um, and, and work through that and we can see that over time the number of values uh, increases and the number of gigs that are played at my local value increases and then we can use things like this um, tree map to filter it etc etc and there's a nice bump chart at the end that shows the the different genres and how they're built up. Right, I want to get on to using padding. I think this is a really important concept. Um, so let's jump right across to building out radial charts and how you can start to use padding to improve these. Let's build one and show you show you what we're doing. Bird strikes data. Um, is what we're going to use here. And these bird strikes are grouped by the hour of the day. And also what we've got here is uh, kind of an AM PM. So let's drag that out. So you can see we've got the hours of the morning. So midnight through to 12 noon, and then the hours of 1 PM till midnight, a group just here. And now, what I've got are the hours of the day just here. And I'd like to represent those in a clock. So let's drag the hours of the day out. And you can see there's 12 in each group. And Tableau's stacking those like we've learned that it, it wants to. But I'd like to build out an XY coordinate that tells me 
which hour of the day and positions them around that clock. Now, the X coordinate is going to be based on the angle that we want to build. So the angle is going to be based on the index, i.e. the whether it's one, two, three, four. So I'm going to calculate the index around that value. And I'm going to divide it by 12 because there's only 12 in a day. And now I'm going to use trigonometry. So the, uh, the angle based on the number of 360 degrees, if we take the sine of that, that's going to give us the amount it moves across in the x direction when we're, when we're plotting that on a, on a chart. So in order to use the sine function, I'm going to have to multiply this by 2 times pi to move this into a circle in radians. And then I can drop this sine function on here. Then if I compute this using the hours in the day, then change this to a circle type, we can see that we're starting to get the basis of that. If I do the same just here, but change this to a cos for the y component, then we'll see we move them into a circle. So we've got the two pi, the 360 degrees, multiplied by the first value, the second value, the third value, etc. So one thing you'll notice, um, the arrow of the day just here, zero, one, they're in slightly the wrong place. So what I'm going to have to do is just take one off this index so that it starts at zero, so that my first index value is zero, and that will give me a 12 o'clock position. And then I can do the same just here. Beautiful. And then we can size by the number of strikes to get something that starts telling us a little bit more about kind of what's going on and the clock pattern makes sense when we're working with radial functions. But perhaps I want a true clock with the value starting just here and moving out to just here. How do I start building that out and building out a more advanced chart type? Well, I'm going to duplicate this data set and show you how we might want to do that. So I've created a copy. And I come into this edit data source value. Now, this is an Excel sheet. So what I can do is union this with itself and create myself two copies of the same sheet. And in the first one, we're going to have a table name that's called FAA Wildlife Strikes. And then for the second one, it's just going to have a one at the end. So now when I go back to my data set to build out something like this, I can use this new data set. So that was copy three that I created. And to use that data set, what I'm going to do is just create a group on that table name. Was it copy three I created? Let's just double check. So let's use this copy and I'm going to call this Chris so I can find it. So when I edit my table name just here and create a group from it, so let's create a group. Ah. He still wants to pick up that uh, the fact there's four of them for some reason. But anyway, not to worry. Um, what I'm going to do is just group this one and call it one, and group this one and call it two. So then when I create that view, what I can do is start adding up some, some extra values. And let me move across here and show you how I did that. So I called that group path. And when it's a one, 
I want to take the value zero so it moves into this circle area. And when it's got a value of something else, so two, I want to take that sign value that I created before. And I do the same with the cos. Then when I drag on my path down here and join up this line from the first value, which is the first duplicate of the data, and move it out to the second duplicate of the data, it's duplicating it out and um, moving between those two values. So the padding, the duplication of the data, putting one copy on top of the other, has duplicated that data and allowed us to join the two exactly like we were doing before. Something that we couldn't do before because we only had one mark. We've created two by duplicating the data and joining them across. How can you use that? Well, this is um, looking at solar energy production in the UK. Um, We've got different clock types showing the amount of energy that solar panels in the UK produce based on a, a traditional clock. The longer the arm, the more more data that, that gets pulled out. How else can we do it? Well, we could use these origin and destination maps. Um, what I've done here is, again, duplicated my data. I had a data set that had destination latitude and longitude and origin lat uh, latitude and longitude. These were in the same row, so I couldn't join that line between the two. So what I've done in my data set is join the two together. Um, and you'll see that I've created this path variable so the first instance will be the origin. Then I'll duplicate it and call that the uh, those records have a, a line on them called destination and, and origin. So what I've then done is created a new field called latitude and longitude. If the path, if the record is from the destination copy of the data then I take the destination latitude. Otherwise, I take the origin latitude. And I do the same with the longitude. If it's destination, I take the destination longitude and the origin longitude. Then, it's a very simple matter to plot those and use that path to again join this value to that value so that we can then filter on an origin and find where people are moving from Ealing and where they're going to work. So the dog, the more orange colors are the people who are working more local. The bluer colors, there's less people flowing out to those values for work. And we can change that and just see where the people who live in Bromley more likely to work. Most of them work in the city by the looks of it with a few going out to Uxbridge and other places. So my last, um, my last example in the last five minutes, I, what I want to try and do is build out um, this example. Um, I think given the problems we've had with this data set, it might be a little bit tricky to do that. So what I'll, what I'll do instead is kind of show you the, the calculations. This is that bird strike data. And what we've built is a coxcomb type data set. Uh, type chart. And again, what we've done is 12 o'clock at the top, rotating round, and it shows the number of bird strikes by time. And we've built this all out in Tableau. And the, the how we've built it out is by um, duplicating the data. Now, if you look at what we've got here, we've actually got four different points in the data set. We've got one that starts on the inner circle at the position of uh, just next to 12 o'clock. It then moves out to the height of the number of bird strikes. It then moves out to the height of the number of bird strikes across here and then moves in again. So we need four copies of the data. And that's what this path is doing just here. We've got one, two, three, and four. And when I calculate my X value, all I'm doing 
is taking if the path is one then i'm joining this drawing this point just here which is the sine of the pi times 2 times the index divided by 12 exactly like i was doing before except have minus 1.5 just to move it past that one o'clock point if it's two then i want to go the same distance on the radial but i want to go a further distance out so i want the same angle different distance therefore i'm multiplying it by my value of the bird strikes which is just a ratio um, that i've done of the bird strikes to keep it sensible so i move that just here if the path three then i do the same distance but to the index minus 0 0.5 so we move into this point just here the angle is different we move into the next value along and we're now multiplying it by the same value so we get a line here and finally we're moving back into the inner circle so we're not multiplying by that one plus but we are doing it to that next value along so what we've done is built out a, by duplicating the data we've built out a series of values and now we're ready to um, join them together so when i've dropped those on here we use the path to say start at number one go to number two go to number three and go to number four and now join those and use the polygon data type to join those together so really we're able to create any kind of chart we want using tableau using the fact that we can just draw lines and go wherever we want using duplicated data and using x y values i mean something that i did recently using exactly the same method was um, these works of HP Lovecraft it was a very similar method I, I padded the data I drew out each tentacle represents a work of HP Lovecraft who was a hover, horror writer and then I moved the um, the tentacle the, the direction of the line left or right depending on whether it was a negative sounding word or a positive sounding word then as I did that, as I duplicated the data, it just flowed through here. And then once I, uh, once I work through the data, I work backwards in the duplicate and just join them up. So this is in the original, and then the path goes backwards through the duplicate down here. So a very similar techniques. And as you get used to these techniques and get used to padding data and duplicating it, you can do a variety of different types of um, of visualizations we have reached the top of the hour i've been right through the basics of tableau right through to some quite advanced charts and trigonometries things that will slightly um, blow your head if you're not used to them um, what i intend to do is write this up as a blog post so that people can work through but i'll also share the recording so that you can work through this and see it at a, at a slower pace as you need to i'll also share the workbook um i'm happy to take questions it is the top of the hour so um feel free to uh, to go um tweet me if you've got any questions otherwise type them in the thing and i'll do my best to answer them as we finish but um, thank you very much for attending we will share the recording and um you can catch the next webinar from my colleague uh, Craig Bloodworth. Uh, that's on, I think, the 5th of December. Um, but check out your local Information Lab uh, site. So the informationlab.com will tell you where an Information Lab office is near you. Check them out. Speak to them about any consultancy training needs or about all these these events. And um, we look forward to to hearing from you soon. Um, thank you very much. I will stay on the line if there are any questions, but I will stop the recording.